Oh my god. <laughs> Up an octave. <laughs> P change. Five, six. All right. I said up into <laughs> the year three thousand. <laughs> Yep, let's go home. Your credit's a big deal, so build yours up with Chime. Just open a Chime checking account with a $200 plus qualified direct deposit to get started. Get started at chime.com slash WT9. That's chime.com slash WT9. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank NA, member FDIC, Chime checking account, and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply. Out of network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. On time payment history may have a positive impact on your credit score. Late payment may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. I uh, personally fall victim to getting my health advice on the internet. Yes, I you do. will not lie. But that was before I found ZocDoc. The thought of going to the doctor always seems like a hassle and it leaves me feeling a little anxious, a little stressed. It's the whole process of just finding a new one. And now we don't have to worry about that. You can book them immediately. Just a few app taps and no more awkwardly waiting on hold with a receptionist. So before you try that next a miracle supplement or skincare step, book an appointment with someone who's been trained for it through ZocDoc because real health advice should not be an internet trend. Go to ZocDoc.com slash wild and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash wild. ZocDoc.com slash wild. Welcome back to Wild <laughs> Till Nine. <laughs> he said I've been to the year three thousand. Jeremy has been ordering something on his phone and I have been singing in a violently off key <laughs> everything the year 3000. We actually practiced our singing today. Yeah. <laughs> now, now uh, we, I, there's probably about four minutes Wee of footage. Wee that was the best one you ever did. Really? Lauren has this thing where she can match pitch. I can match pitch? She just wants to be pitch buddies. I'm gonna stay at your no. Right, so like. You can't take me to a no and then leave. I need you to stay on the no. Ready? Okay. E. e. <laughs> Ween. 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 Oh, the cl- just stop it there. So close, so you know close. It. Okay, okay. That's well, the, give me you one more, better. give me one more, give me more. Ween. Ween. <laughs> little flat, Ween. little flat. <laughs> I will say, since we started harmonizing to ween every time I'm naked, I show. Uh, I think your singing's gotten better. I think so too. I think your harmonies are getting better. Oh man. Yeah, I think so too. Um, speaking of harmonies. Speaking of harmonies, we just went to go see the Jonas Brothers. Uh, where's... So we both got merch. To be honest, I'm one of those people that has debilitating decision paralysis. No, you know what? It's kind of the opposite opposite of decision paralysis because I'm so definite in my decision. You're quick to your first answer. I'm quick to my first answer and I feel good about it and I stay there. But then a couple hours later, sometimes I'm like, that wasn't the right answer. Are you the person who is like during standardized testing? We get halfway through and go, wait, fuck. I answered that one wrong and just go back, 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 yes, back, back. Yes, 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 100%, 100%. I, I see that. If there's one that doesn't feel right, if it didn't sit right, I'll go back to it for sure. It didn't, it didn't feel it right. It didn't feel right. No, I, I get it. It didn't feel right. Can you imagine right. being like a teacher today, like like someone hands in their like their test, they go back to their desk, five minutes later, I'm sorry, Mr. Allison. Number 24 did not feel right, I need my test back. It doesn't feel right anymore, I need to, I need to change my answer. Yeah, also I wanna give, I wanna share a Joe Bro fun fact. Well, let's, okay, so where's your merch? Oh, so what happened was, so we went to the, so we went to the, so where do you want to start? Where do you want to start? We made our very first, the maiden voyage to Dodger Stadium this weekend. Yes. To see. We had an incredibly social weekend as well this week, this past weekend. I'm shocked that I have so much social battery left. I, It reminds me of the fact that I am an extrovert in there. Somewhere, somewhere. Anyway, drunkenly after the streamies, I think, Mm -hmm. I bought tickets to see, actually, I wanted to see Lawrence, the band, their opener. Yeah. And then of course, Jonas Brothers being a bonus is, is great. Joe bro bonus. Cause although- I Jeremy like also learned about the bonus Jonas. Frankie? Frankie. Justice for Frankie. Justice for way, Frankie. Where was Frankie? Anyway, I digress. No, 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 Frankie, Frankie wouldn't, he doesn't, he, he hates being the bonus Jonas. He also had a TikTok era. Okay. And I, I, I'm Frankie, I'm so sorry if you're still in your TikTok era. He just hasn't, I haven't been on Bonus Jonas talk. I feel like your- we could have Frankie on the pod. He's in his music era, not oh. being a dope Jonas Brothers musician, oh. but his own thing. And 
I see him on the in the podcast. Maybe circles. comment below if you want the fourth famous Jonas Brothers. Yeah, to <laughs> be here. Some people might argue that he's more famous than Kevin. That's rude. I I just I, because Kevin's not problematic, just because Kevin's not um, triggering, just because Kevin's not making his business everybody else's does not mean that's true. He's the no, least famous. No, Kevin is peaceful. Although I that, love that for that Kevin. That does kind of mean he's probably the least famous. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who's he married to? He is married to, uh, her name is Danielle, I'm pretty sure. Got it. Um, it, was it just, she actually just has a jewelry line. Danielle, well, Danielle Jonas now, but I forget what her last name is, but she has a, we I, don't think know that. a I think she has a jewelry line. We don't know that it's Jonas. Cause Nick is Priyanka. Right. And Joe is uh, Nick Chopra. all over the headlines right now with Sophie. And you know, as someone who has been through an incredibly public breakup, like that shit sucks. And so like, I'm a hypocrite for, for taking sides publicly and being like, oh, I support this side. Because like, again, no one fucking knows what goes on inside of this relationship, except for those two people. But Lauren, what I will say- you were, you were doing so well. What I will say is that what I don't support though is his publicity team slandering the mother of his children. It's not about the relationship. It's about the publicity team making her out to be a bad mom and saying that she's like out drunk partying. That's the part that I am not okay with. I don't, so I've heard that from multiple people. I haven't read that. I've read that over so, basically the, he let his publicity, and so I'm not saying that he said, but he did not get in the way and stop or correct. He didn't issue corrections. He didn't issue corrections of his publicity team issuing that their lifestyles were not a good match because she just wants to get drunk and go party. He did issue a statement at the show though. He that said- tear was a paid fucking actor. Lauren? I'm just kidding. You I don't know back. what's going on in their personal life. I take life. it back. No, obviously getting a divorce and like having to uh, like break apart your family, that is probably devastating. And so that probably. tear going down his face, I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure it was very real. And so he said something along the lines of like, if it didn't come from my mouth, like don't, don't believe it. But that I makes- I think it was a Lannister always pays their debts. <laughs> is that what he said? I think so, yeah. Is that Lannister always pays Yeah. But that, that almost made me more mad because then yeah. I was like, okay, like if, I just feel like I just feel like the mother of his children is not a drunk, and that's what he let his publicity team. By the way, I would say, say even if she was, let's say she was. Yeah, protect protect the mother of your children. Even beyond that, protect the like the the image that your kid's going to grow into right, one right. day like, of their mother. You know who does a great job of this is Kim Kardashian protecting her children from Kanye. If Kim can do it, if Kim can do it, yeah, Joe Anyone Jonas, can do it. you can fucking do it. I'm not as aggressive towards Joe, uh, although I do think his publicist is doing a bang up job of, of like yeah. greasing the wheels for him. I know. And also the other thing too, is that Sophie Sophie posted what was like the most like PR scripted usual thing of what you say being like, oh, like over these years, we've grown apart. We enjoyed our time together. We have so much love for each other. They, and he didn't interact with it at all. They didn't sit on the floor of their bedroom. And, and make a breakup video? Yeah. Apparently not. I mean. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, they, obviously. so we went to the Jonas Brothers concert and like mm -hmm. I went with a fervor to see Joe Bros, don't get me wrong. Let me preface this by saying we are spoiled brats. Yes. And I, that applies to a lot of things. I was gonna say, I'm not entirely sure where this is going, but I probably do concur with the statement. So like, yes. Like I, I can remember a time, which is the majority of my life still, mm -hmm. but it feels like a long time ago, like as a kid, I used to go and see, like go to Chicago to see a show, mm -hmm. which is several layers of having to ask for permission, save up money, buy gas, go to the, like all the things that like- Totally. Make it an event, like something to look forward to. Like if, if a show was on a Friday or yep. whatever the fuck it was, mm -hmm. I was thinking about it in school all day, days leading up to. Mm -hmm. Fast forward now, we are so wildly spoiled. It like, it, it, it ruins almost the excitement sometimes of like doing stuff that is really cool. Cause in LA there's, there's Always so a thousand shows happening. going on. Yeah. We have, since I've worked in music long enough and mm. you do internet stuff, I feel like we get tickets to things easier than it should be. You know who I got an email from today about whose upcoming tour that I think I got us tickets for? It better be fucking Bruno Mars. Olivia Rodrigo. When you say you guys, who are you taking? I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> And I, your ticket is gone. <laughs> I love this night for you guys. I love Olivia Rodrigo. I know you oh do. Oh my God. I know you do. Don't don't let me ruin that time for you. Great, okay, all right. Like, that should be a girls night thing. And it will be. Yeah. Anyway, we get point blank, exactly. We get tickets to these stuff, yeah. like to like see cool and stuff also, like, all the time. 
most touring artists are going to do an LA yes. show. Yes. So like, it's never like, like I think a lot of Canadians, um, for example, like Taylor Swift not coming to Canada. You know what I mean? It's like when your favorite artist doesn't come, you're like, oh my God. Like, Which, by the way, hate crime? That is a hate crime. Even Justin Trudeau tweeted her. Really? Yeah. You guys, like, Please. She's going to Toronto. Enough with the Taylor Swift slander. Oh, okay? she is? Yeah, she's going to Toronto. Uh, Justin J Justin Trudeau put in his bid and she said, yes, <laughs> Canada. I, she said, oh, Canada. I will say, oh boy. <laughs> Dad, go, go to bed. <laughs> when we podcast after nine o'clock. <laughs> I mean, she said, oh, Canada. Um, two things, actually, now that we've decided to already um, jump the, the thought train. I'm sad that nobody else in the world besides Shoshana yeah. got to see my close friends of you singing karaoke, Taylor Swift, at about midnight 30. Okay, what kind of fucking monster would not sing along? Everyone knows the words to Taylor Swift songs. So it's like, you're not, what kind of monster wouldn't sing at karaoke? That would just make you a bad person. I, show, I think we leave it right there. Perfect. Take Perfect. your win, guys. I think we leave it right take there. Take your win. No, you, you were, that was the closest you've been to being a Swifty. Yeah, and also I- Don't fucking ruin it. <laughs> just do the thing that I don't, do the thing that I don't do. Do the thing that you don't do. Which is stop talking. Just, oh, <laughs> sh just shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Shut the, the, the thing up. that I have, like, I'm, yeah. it's impossible for me to figure out. I'm doing a video tomorrow, uh, 30 things that I've learned. I'm not done with my story. By 30. And <laughs> one of them is it is easier sometimes to just shut the fuck up. But it's never easier for me. I could just say more. You've gotten so much better at just shutting the fuck up. Thanks, babe. In the four, f five? C coming on five. No. Yeah. Five years? In like a couple months. What in the mother, what, what? Yeah, we've been doing this I posted, um. What have you done for five years? I, <laughs> what else have you done for five years? Nothing, literally nothing. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Holy shit. I know, that's a new one for me. You know, it's been nine months that we've been engaged. Um, Only because every single day I wake up and I thank my lucky stars. Yes. For having such yes. a hot piece of ass in my life. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> That's what keeps me young. Sorry, That's what keeps me young sorry, right Mom. there. Uh, anyway. Back to Jonas Brothers, back to Jonas Brothers. So Lawrence, you were okay, bummed. Hold on. hold on. I can't remember the last time I bought tickets yeah. to see a show in LA okay. and didn't even think about, who do I know? I was like, you know what? I just want to go. Right. I want to go. And it sounds coherent and well thought out when I say it this way, but to be clear, I was drunk at a table and the got the streamies having a good time out. And I was like, oh my fuck, we should go see fucking Jonas no, Brothers right now. No, you were on the couch, we were home. Oh, okay, got it. Which would have been peak drunk though. Like right. you would have been the, the most incoherent. But anyway, the, the, the reason that I ended up buying them was because I actually looked at when this band, Lawrence the Band, it's brother, sister. Anyway, Lawrence the Band was gonna be in LA. And they were like, next month at Dodger Stadium. I was like, when the fuck did Lawrence the Band get that? So like, big. Lawrence is big, like, like not that, I didn't know. And then mm -hmm. I realized, oh, they're opening for the Joe Bros. Now, as someone who's banging currently Jonas Brothers' latest album, sure, this was an exciting opportunity for me. Right. Bought tickets immediately on the spot. I went with whatever the best seat score was. Great seats. Great seats. Great seats. And uh, shockingly affordable. Yeah. For how, for how good those seats were, yeah. shockingly affordable. Pro tip to everybody who like wants to actually see a good show, sit by the sound guy. Best seats in the house, always. Okay. Always. That's, that's fact. Okay. It's like you didn't, didn't care about my fun fact. I am still waiting to share my fun fact about year 3000, but keep going. So anyway, <laughs> I have not shared, I don't know if anyone can relate to this. This will just be a monologue episode. I don't know if anybody can relate to this, but like when you like music and you don't know if your significant other would also like that music. And if you'd also just assume that they probably wouldn't like that music, it's almost like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna say anything because they're like, I don't wanna make, make, make fun of me. That's how I felt about Lawrence with you. And I did play a couple singles the night of, while mm -hmm. we were in the shower, pre-gaming for it. Yeah, and I was like, those are great. Great. We get to the venue. Yeah. With little-ish turmoil. It was fine. We get in, mm -hmm. mood is great. Merch line is long. Beer line is longer. Every person that goes to Jonas Brothers concert, and I mean everyone, <laughs> watches this podcast. And by the way, <laughs> I think that they are some of the top tier people I've ever met. I loved all of them. Jeremy was shocked at the how the demographic was kind of just like our it age and maybe a little age. bit younger. And I was like, yes, that's because that is who grew up with the Joe Bros. Yeah, but like they were all cool. They were all fucking cool. Like everyone we met that night I'm sorry, was cool. This feels like Tilly slander. So <laughs> we get a drink, lines are fucking crazy. It's mm -hmm. eight o'clock. 
the show's about to start. We hear mm-hmm. things revving up and we hear like the music begin. Of course, at that moment, Lauren looks at me and goes, I said to go potty and then we can go down. Even though she went to potty maybe 20 minutes ago. It's like a, a thing with you. It's like a, uh, once we get to the new location, it's like diggy, you have to pee on it and then well, you can relax. I have to, I have to empty so no, totally. I'm on, I'm on No, e. I get it, I get it. No, do you, yeah. don't, you don't need to explain your bladder to me. Yeah, yeah. I more or less understand. Sure. And so I was like begrudgingly like, okay, we'll wait outside of it. And then I realized, what's that sound? That's not Lawrence. That's Jonas Brothers. Yeah. And I was like, huh, weird that the Jonas Brothers are like opening, like getting the crowd warm right. for so the I'm, opener. Right. And I was like, okay, got it. One song and out. Song two, Cho Bro. Song three. I also want to be very clear here. There, there was like a very specific part that you skipped over is that as soon as the music started playing, I was like, I'll come back to the bathroom by myself. Let's go to our seats. You did, you did say that. Thank you. And then we like forgot to check in at some fucking thing for floor seats or whatever. And we like had to like get double back. Anyway, after song three, it was very apparent. Lawrence was not coming on <laughs> and my mood soured. <laughs> and by soured, I mean, I became a persnickety little bitch that was having a bad time. Honestly, the weed gummy couldn't save you. It did eventually. Yeah, it did eventually. That's true, thank God. I was God. waiting for my weed gummy to sit in. Mm-hmm. It didn't. I was stone cold sober, standing there two and a half feet taller than everyone in the crowd. Yeah. Standing in front of somebody behind me who then had to like look to their left and right, or whatever, to like even see the stage. That's not your fault though. No, but like I get, I get self-conscious yeah, about no, that. Yeah, no, I get that. Like, no, Out people that aren't like aware like, of their own yeah. body and just like- Those are the worst. I don't want to make somebody else's time bad when I could just like move to the left or right. Right. Anyway, we then decided to look up Lawrence's Instagram and we then, well, we, I discovered Lawrence put on a hell of a show an hour and 15 minutes earlier. I'm someone also who like, I do a deep dive onto the venue website. Every like, time. because I'm like, okay, like what are like the bag allowances? Does it have to be a clear bag? Like what, since, are, what are you allowed in? Ever since we went the to, Super Bowl. We, no, it, wasn't the, it was the game before the Super Bowl. Oh yeah. Yeah, it wasn't the Super Bowl. Thank yeah. God, I was prepared that day. So I fucked up one time and had a bag that was a little bit too big outside of the constrictions and I and it was a it was a hassle. So I have a clear concert bag and so like I always go online and just like make sure that I'm following all the rules and I was like, "Hey, 8 p.m. start time, great." It's very gale of you. And um it's because I know that a that a moment like that can make you a persnickety bitch and I'm like, oh, "We are going to we're going to have a great night tonight." Anyway, I was complimenting you because that's like a great attribute of anyone. Very prepared. And like Gail would not go into a situation not having educated herself to the yes. best of her ability. Right, and so like I scoured the website for information that was helpful. And the fact that that wasn't on like the tickets or the website was very confusing. I, yeah, I guess I would have thought that if you look up, like, you know, like sometimes like openers get added afterwards yeah. and like fun fact, a lot of times big arena openers are paying to be there. Really? Yes. They pay to open When there's for more people? than one opening act. Yeah. Especially if there's more than two opening acts. Oh, I guess that makes sense. It's incredible exposure. They're to like be on like yeah. the, the poster and but everything. Do you have any idea how expensive it is? I can't even imagine. To one, like buy to the group, uh-huh. right? But then two, pay for all of the semis, all of the right, merch, all the gas. Stuff. It's yeah. wild. I can't like it is a like trust fund baby central that mm-hmm. gets like the, oh, I'm gonna go out and just like tour the, like, the nation with this massive group, despite the fact that I'm only paying for the privilege to play. Right, 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 yeah. right, right. Anyway, this didn't feel like that. This felt like, oh, like they would be an opener and mm-hmm. the Joe Bros would go on at nine, 9.30, like a normal time, nothing. Not the case. And eventually my mood figured itself out. But yeah. man, I'm still so sad. They'll be here another time. That's the best part of it, again, about being in LA is that we will get another opportunity. But what if there's not? What if we don't get good seats? What if I don't hear about it? What if I don't see it? What this if is, we're this late? This is a very Lauren-esque spiral. I feel Lauren. I was, I, the last time that like I went as a fan, just like I paid money, went as a fan, like went to the experience and just like, mm-hmm. I felt robbed. It was sad. But the rest of the night was great. At least you got a great shirt, a great anyway, Joe Bro shirt. It was a good night. I, I'm honestly shocked at how, good at singing they were, to uh-huh. be honest. Yeah. Like, sounded pretty fucking good. It sounded great. Yeah, like I was shocked. Cause like, it's a lot of singing. You know, some people like have like songs just like, it's a lot of just like fucking DJs. Just yeah, doing no, whatever. no, it was, it was, I had a great time. Yeah. Um, Year 3000 is like one of my favorite songs ever. And one of their most commercially successful tracks. And one of the, it is extremely commercially, co- commercially, commercially, co- commercially successful, but, it's originally by a British band 
named Busted in 2003. And I guess it would, it did well in the UK, but I guess he was like, hey man, like this didn't take off in the US. It's your song if you want it. And then they recorded a cover and the Joe Bro version of Year 3000 took the fuck off. I mean, meant to be. Great song. Yeah. It's just, I feel like that just went viral recently though, that that wasn't originally their song and everyone's minds are absolutely blown. But I, feel- I, I was there for there for, for Year 3000, mm-hmm. burning up. Uh-huh. And uh, Love Bug, which is not, I feel like a fan fave, but it's one of my personal Which one's Love Bug? Go ahead and sing a couple bars for me. I can't think of the, I can't think of the melody right now. Love Bug, <laughs> now I'm, now I know it because you sang it. Love Bug again, now I'm speechless. Oh boy. <laughs> Another commercial success. <laughs> Another commercial success. Lil DIY coming to a tour <laughs> new year. Um, I think Jonas Brothers has some bangers. They do have some bangers. They've got major bangers. I also appreciate the fact that they put on a show that like spans the catalog. Oh yeah, five albums yeah. one night. That was the whole. Like that some was people the whole like, they come out, they only do their new stuff. Yeah. Or they only do no, the no, old no, stuff. No, but they're smarter than that. Though they know that the people don't just want Waffle House. Yeah, but the fact. I mean. We want Waffle House, Great but Waffle. we also want Love Bug. That's right. what I'm saying. I just feel like when you can do something for 15 years and people are excited about the whole arc, yeah. pretty cool. Love that for them. I mean, we've been doing this for five years. It's still pretty and good. And we're going to keep doing it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, God. But so, and then uh, we went to a birthday party. And yep. then the next day we went to a baby shower. Keenan and Ayla. Keenan and Ayla. Well, Ayla well, had- Kayla four inch heels on. She is due at the end of the month and that bitch had four inch heels and I have never- 93 degrees, 93 hot, degrees. She sunny. looked incredible. She's ready to take on the bullshit of a small child. Oh my God. She looked absolutely incredible. I, and we are so excited for that baby to be the first pod baby to ever come on the pod. We did open that, that invite up. I, did, Even might, at the end of the episode, they were like, yeah, the baby's coming on. The, like we, this is going to be the pod baby. I, but I think she's perfect for it. Oh my God. She, I mean, she's just so sweet and cute. But like, she seems to be really, I don't know, uh, happy, genuinely happy. Yeah. She seems to be handling. So there's like, like very like really internet well. happy, but yeah. like behind no cameras on. I actually saw she Lauren really happy. Um, Geraldo talking about, so she is, she might've actually already had her baby. By the time this comes out, she will for sure have Lauren already Geraldo's had her pregnant? baby. Yes. Okay, good to know. Her and Henny got married. They're married? Yes. They had a beautiful Mexico wedding. Congrats. Columbia, no, wait, no, Columbia, Columbia, Columbia. Columbia, Columbia. Yeah, it was <sighs> absolutely stunning. Oh, yes, Columbia, Mexico. Um, <laughs> And uh, she was saying how when she- Real quick, what, what continent is Columbia <laughs> Oh no. in? I don't want to participate in this. Lauren, you got this, you got question. this. Babe, we are a quiz couple. Columbia. Hmm. South America? Ding, ding, ding. Oh God, thank God, thank God, thank God. I was like 95% sure, but the 5% that wasn't sure, it would have been really, really wrong. And I don't, didn't want that on the internet. Hey, not that there's not one worse. One for one, 100%. Thank you so much. Um, But she was talking about how during her pregnancy, like, or like while she was getting pregnant and before being pregnant, she said that she rarely saw anyone talking about positive experiences. <laughs> And ah. she- cause Apply I, that to the rest of the internet. I mean, cause she she had, I guess, a beautiful pregnancy. She's like, I felt stunning the whole time. Really? Like I felt like I was glowing. My mom was the same way. She loved being pregnant. I feel like just nobody wants to loved. hear that. They just like wanted like, are you miserable too? Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, cause I think a lot of people have really, really hard pregnancies. And I saw another makeup girl, uh, Desi Perkins. She was saying how her first pregnancy, she felt the same, like felt so beautiful, empowered, just like glowing. And then her second pregnancy was really, really hard. And she felt like shit the entire time. And so I think that, you know, you just want to feel connected to other mothers who are probably going through the same thing, but- Good or bad? It was it was nice to see someone saying that they had a good time though, because most people are just talking about how their assholes ripped open. <sighs> and I'm not saying that that won't happen to her. Hopefully putting the juju out there that her asshole will not rip out. I, I don't know what, I don't know what kind of um, birth juju? she's planning on having. But, Buddy hole um, juju? Yeah, exactly. Buddy juju? I'm trying to put that, that good non-ripping Ayla? asshole out for Ayla too. It was about four foot six. Yep. So I hope that she's getting all the sedation. I also hope that as well too, if that's what she wants. If that's what she wants. If that's what, if she, that's wants. what she wants. Do what you want. Do what you want. I think that to be fair, I sh- I think she is thoroughly enjoying this period. I think so too. Which is fun. And she looks great. 
Um, I saw, I don't know how, why- But the key looks great my, too, babe. Yeah, totally. I saw this TikTok <laughs> of this woman who was saying, and I guess, this, I guess this is how women used to give birth, is on their hands and knees, which mm. makes so much sense with gravity though. Like obviously you need someone to like catch the baby as it pops out. But that really does make a lot of sense in terms of like the position of gravity of how that would work. <laughs> what about, what about, <laughs> what about the squatty potty? I am the biggest believer. Sometimes I feel like I could have a baby in the squatty potty position. <laughs> There, I'm not kidding, this thought has crossed my mind. And this is one of those like, those intrusive thoughts where I'm like, this probably shouldn't come out of my mouth, but where I'm like, this this feels like a good position to have a baby. But you hear about that all the time where people where girls don't know they're pregnant and they're just pooping and sometimes a baby comes out. <laughs> that actually happened to someone I know. <laughs> Can you please say something? <laughs> Can you cue the, the, the little but, clip where it goes, knowing when to shut the fuck up? That's what I'm saying about the position of gravity though, that feels like it should make sense. I literally can't poop without a squatty potty. We know. <laughs> Every time we're at a fucking hotel, I can hear her dragging the nearest trash can across every single tile, flipping it over. Once. Bling, 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 and then just like feet up. Once your body has pooped in the natural position of the squatty potty position, yeah. you can't go back. I got- You can't go back. You know what's a bit of a cheat code? What? Be tall. Having long ass legs, cause yeah, the then you're in- is the squatty potty. <sighs> That's, what a privilege. Like, if I use the squatty potty, my knees, Your knees are, are at my yours. shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know how fucking ridiculous- just- Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to do anything yeah, in that yeah, position. No, no, that's, that's, I don't know if we could ever have sex again if I walked in and saw you in that position. You say that, but not but 37 minutes ago, I was <laughs> jumping butt naked, trying to kill a mosquito. <laughs> when girls talk about getting the ick, when they like see, they see, the most recent one I saw is that they saw their boyfriend um, like kicking their feet underwater and their toes were just like a little, it just like looked, it just like looked like a little like weird. And they were like, just immediately got the ick. And I was like, you're so lucky that this isn't happening right now with just like a flaccid dick just flopping okay, as least, you're jumping okay, to get the bug. At least, but what was that motion there? But yeah, you can use that. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Uh, there's something about like, at least I was like aware of the fact I was like, I, I need to go put boxes on. Yeah. Cause I cannot, I can't exist in a world. Jump around naked. Where you've seen me miss this fucking mosquito three more times. Right, naked. Just flapping in the wind. Flaccid, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did we have a visual for this or? No, we didn't, okay, got it. I thought about taking a photo. I was like, this, this, should that probably would, that be. would be a thing that's in Lauren's like like library for sure. The worst <sighs> nudes you could have ever imagined. Oh, for sure. It's like it's just sunburns, like, popping for mosquitoes. If you ever see a hot nude of Lauren, fake. It's it, fake. Yeah. If you see a nude of like, oh my god, look at my sunburn. Yeah, and my, it's like my the worst angle of everything mm -hmm. you could ever imagine. And I'm also in the background looking like an idiot. That's real. That's real. <laughs> that's real. That is a real. Moving one. on. That's a real one. the low score or none at all, navigating the financial world can be daunting. That's why millions have found their answer with the Chime Secured Credit Builder Visa Credit Card. Build your credit score the smarter way with everyday purchases and timely payments. Dive into a world where there's no annual fee or credit checks to kickstart your journey. You can get your cash up to two days earlier with qualifying direct deposits because who doesn't want an early payday? And there's no monthly minimum balance or overdraft fees. Use spot me to overdraft up to $200 without any fees. Just set up a qualifying direct deposit, enroll in spot me and chimes got your back. I think Chime is a huge financial asset for anyone who is starting life on their own and embarking on the very intimidating financial future. Building credit can be hard, and honestly, no one in school teaches you how to do it, which is why we are such huge fans of Chime. With Chime, you have access to over 60,000 fee-free ATMs. That's more than the top three national banks combined. Locate one effortlessly with the Chime app, and you can also send and receive funds via Chime, regardless of your friend's bank, and enjoy fee-free cash outs. Your credit's a big deal, so build yours up with Chime. Just open a Chime checking account with a $200 plus qualified direct deposit to get started. Get started at chime.com slash WT9. That's chime.com slash WT9. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank NA, member FDIC. Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply. Out of network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. On time payment history may have a positive impact on your credit score. Late payment may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. 
Raise your hand if any of this sounds like you. You can't stop scrolling because you are following that oh-so-enlightening health expert on TikTok. You gulp down all of the latest supplements recommended by the internet, even when they taste a little, little interesting, a little funky. And let's not forget the 17-step nightly ritual to achieve the perfect skin and hair. When's the last time you saw an actual doctor? You know, the ones with tangible medical degrees, stethoscopes, and a waiting room. If you're racking your brain, it's time for a change. Seriously, log out of TikTok and run to the ZocDoc app ASAP. With thousands of top-rated doctors, verified patient reviews, and a seamless booking experience, you can finally meet a professional who actually knows what they're talking about. Not only will they have years of medical expertise, but they'll genuinely understand you. I uh, personally fall victim to getting my health advice from the internet. Yes, you I do. will not lie. But that was before I found Zogdog. The thought of going to the doctor always seems like a hassle and it leaves me feeling a little anxious, a little stressed. It's the whole process of just finding a new one. And now we don't have to worry about that. ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top rated patient reviewed doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for. These docs all have verified reviews from actual, real patients, not bots. The average wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is just between 24 and 48 hours. That's it. You can even score same-day appointments. Once you find the doc you want, you can book them immediately. Just a few app taps and no more awkwardly waiting on hold with a receptionist. So before you try that next miracle supplement or skincare step, book an appointment with someone who's been trained for it through ZocDoc because real health advice should not be an internet trend. Go to ZocDoc.com slash wild and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's ZocDoc.com slash wild. ZocDoc.com slash wild. We had a good time. We had a great time. And I'm not... Once again, I'm not kidding. We probably ran into 30, 40? Maybe. Tillies? Yeah. Like, I feel like everywhere we went, we were literally, as we were checking out buying merch, I was making some fucking like jackass Yeah, no, the, jackass the, the, the joke. girl that checked us out at the merch, at like, the merch the way, booth. I'm like, yeah. on like a pod fucking, like I'm like on a pod tear right I now. Know. And I've just been eating up you guys. I'm I like, wish we'd asked her name so we could say hello personally. I'm Joe Bro merch person. Oh, thanks for the shirt. Thanks for the shirt. <laughs> yeah, I made a I made a bad shirt call. Made a bad shirt call. I even put it we on noticed. today to go to Target and I couldn't even bring myself to go to Target in it. When you made the choice. Yeah. It's what I assume you do when you can tell that like a, a stupid boy is making bad design choices yeah. or bad fashion choices. Mm. And I remember thinking to myself, of all the shirts, that would be my last pick. I know. I don't know. I don't know what it was. I don't know what it was. I, uh, yeah. I know. You know what though? I I do think that a lot of artists have shitty concert merch. A lot of them don't own, like they don't own their own rights for it. Oh, and they don't get to choose. They don't get to make yeah. decisions. Well, oh, that's brutal. I mean, to a degree, but yeah, like pick your battles. There's so many artists where I'm like, this, th you're going to sell so many of these and this is what you came out with? I know. Anyways, love that Joe Bro shirt for you. At least new merch soon. Yeah, well, we're figuring that out currently. I agree. I'm, 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 I'm in the midst of all of that. Got it. I'm in the midst of all of that. Okay. Um, you wanna talk about capybaras? Oh my God, I forgot that we had the Try Guys on last week and so we didn't get to do a zoo and we recap. Had two Try Guys. We, uh, we had, we had, Zach and we had 66.66% .66 of the Try Guys. That's a great, it's a great um, decimal. And we didn't get to do a San Diego Zoo we recap. I got the first cut of my vlog back that has all of the zoo footage and it is, it's not all zoo. It's not all zoo. It's a big chunk zoo, but it's not all zoo, but it is 58 minutes. <laughs> that is- Like when you do part one and part two of vlogs. Crazy, that's crazy. Sometimes I just lose track of what I've said or like, cause like sometimes I said you footage. Either, you, don't, you either shoot nowhere near enough or too much, much, too much. Yeah. Well, cause I'm always like, oh, I just feel like not enough like fun stuff has happened. And then 58 minutes later, here we are. And that's after the cut. That's after the cut. Like that's, things have been taken away. No, no, my editor edited for hours, hours today. But there's that much meat there. A lot of meat. A lot of meat. A lot of meat, a lot of capybara meat. A lot of capybara meat. They, no. Not that kind of meat. No. 
Boo. Uh, not that Boo. Take it, say something else. Okay. The capybaras were so cute. Little it was, babies. I'm not kidding. I started tearing up and I was like, I refuse to miss a moment of this because I won't be able to see through teary eyes. And I sucked those tears back into my soul and said, not today. So I, um, I made the strategic um, decision to about a week and a half before we went, suggesting the idea of, hey, babe, what if, as opposed to just us going to the mm -hmm. Gababeras, what if you invited your team mm -hmm. and we invited some mutual friends as well to go with us? Yeah. Because power in numbers. Totally. Mostly because the thought of having to stand there while someone is like, is she okay? <laughs> By yourself. And people are like, did Lord DIY's <laughs> Fiance just break up with her. Or like, why is she crying? Why is she, crying? Why is she making such a scene? <laughs> I needed, I needed more people. Yeah, 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 no, no, I understand, I understand. So Shoshana, understand. thank you. Kate, thank you. Uh, Nick and April, thank, thank you, you for accompanying me Aww. to join me in the excitement. I didn't, I didn't. A, a tear, you nary didn't. a yeah, tear fell. Didn't. No, you were too captivated. I was. Uh, you was, didn't want to blur your vision I, and miss it. Literally, I didn't want to blur my vision and miss it. That's exactly what it was. Because we got to the capybara exhibit and we saw the dad, and he was kind of just like snoozing under a tree, kind of far. And I was like. I was like, so, you know, so happy to be there, but I was like, oh, like this kind of like one of those things where it's like, how long can you just stand there and watch Capybara snooze? The answer is the limit does not exist. I was gonna say, but yeah. I was like, I would like, where are the babies? You know, cause like if they were in a little ball and you couldn't really see them, like that would be, I would be happy to be there, but like, you know, maybe Boom. a little disappointed. Yeah, can you just like poke one of them? And all of a sudden Kidding. the um, Capybara specific expert has a bucket of lettuce. Well, hold on, so when you go to each, when you go to each habitat, each yeah. exhibit, Hab habitat? Habitat, yeah. habitat, yeah. You can tell that there's like somebody there who's responsible for like knowing everything about the species. Oh yeah. And like, can like interpret like, and obviously like they're there to like interpret and like tell you and teach you about it, but also like they're there to take care of the capybaras. Yes. So, so she had like the food and the this and the that, and like mm -hmm. knows them and I've seen them get birth. Like every time you like ask them about it, they're like, oh, well, she gave birth four weeks ago and yeah. then they did this and they're mating here. And they have this system where they literally tag everybody and they they look for the 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 like opposite, um, mm -hmm. what, genealogy, DNA yeah, attributes of them? Right, right. Because the farther apart they are as far as like DNA wise, Yeah which I'm thinking to myself now, when I go back to the Moose, Moose and Diggy, Diggy being yeah, we'll touch on that in a minute. Yeah, I'm just, <laughs> yeah, I just put that together. So the San Diego Zoo does a great job of finding DNA that AZA is- AZA certified. That is as far away and different. So that way the offspring is strong and diversified and yep, whatever, yep, what, yep. unlike our inbred fucking pigs downstairs. Okay, that is not anyway. true. We learned so much about purebred dogs so anyway, this week as well. She was like, I feel like we would like get there and they were like, just like, they, it was their moment to so tell much us about knowledge. it. But like, I will say, I learned a lot about all these random animals. Oh my God. I learned not that much, but only because I know so a freakish amount of, anim I of animals. I had no idea I was dating a zoologist. Yeah, I know, I know. Lauren knows more about animals than I know about anything. We, this is, this is separate of the capybaras, but we somehow ended up on, no, here's where, here's exactly where this started. Is Your memory gets real good when animals I are involved. I watched a TikTok of this girl do a basic um, American history test. And she answered one of the questions of what are the seven continents? Her first answer was Italy. And I was like- <laughs> Strong start. Uh, strong start, strong Gelato. Start. And <laughs> Italy took me out. And then she said, Spain is the next one. Took me, the f I was crying. So anyways, we were, I was watching this girl take this American history test. And to be fair, I only knew half the answers because I don't know any, I don't know shit about American Canadian. history. Canadian. Um, so then I wanted to ask Jeremy all those questions to see how many he got right. The only one that you got wrong, you actually over-engineered the question is about um, who arrived um, on the Mayflower. Yeah, for whatever reason, I was pulling up Columbus's ships. Right, and we somehow ended up down a wormhole of doing uh, Britannica quizzes for about two hours last Yo, night. Britannica, chill out. They have some of the most complicated niche quizzes. Yeah, so anyways, I was identifying animals by just their eyes. No, 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 hold on, You're not, hold on. <laughs> So like, I feel like it's like they, like they warm you up and it's like, uh, U.S. history, isn't that? And then it's like, mm -hmm. name the animal by the- Tail. Tail. We did one that was named the animal by the tail. I right. got 100% correct. The tail. Eye. Named and by the like, eye. Name the animal by the- The speck on the feather. The, the leftover <laughs> wrapper that they ate yesterday of the food, if they were ah. in the month of like- I'm like, it didn't matter how specific and weird and niche. And like these pictures, like you look at it and any normal human, if you're watching this, you could look at this, you would look at it and go, that is nothing. You can't distinguish anything. And Lauren's like, 
That's a manatee tail. Literally, obviously, that was what I was. Uh, manatee, beaver, <laughs> Commander Dragon, <laughs> lemur. Uh, what, was it, what, was, what was the um, the one that was with the capybara? Uh, tapir. Tapper. Tapper. Tapir. I thought it was tapir. Tap. Taper. I think taper. Taper. T a p i r. A tapperini. Tapperini. <laughs> She doesn't even know the name of it, but she sure could guess it yesterday. You they, were 100%. They, 100%. You, if we ever have like animal quiz or animal trivia. Put me on your team. I'm betting Put me our on. house. Colors, dog breeds, I also got 100% on. Dog breeds, colors, uh, foods, because I worked in grocery stores for so uh, long. As I'm, I'm not kidding. I couldn't know less about anything that is edible. Literally, Radicchio showed up, um, <laughs> which is a type of- uh, Oh my God, a, Lauren, say yeah. that again, please. Oh no. <laughs> Oh no, stop, stop. <laughs> is it not Radicchio? Radicchio? Oh my God, thank oh, God. No. <laughs> what is it? Thank God, because no. I got chastised no, last night. No, 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 you're really close. It's Radicchio. Oh, oh, that's so close. That's so close. But Radicchio is crazy. <laughs> Literally, we were like, we were like, Radicchio. It sounds like a fucking spell, right? It does sound like Radicchio? a spell. Radicchio? Yeah. It's like the purple cabbage lettuce. It's like, I think it's pretty like tart. Wait, so how do you, how are you supposed to pronounce it? Radicchio. Radicchio. No dick. No dick. Radicchio. <laughs> Radicchio. What, what, what purpose does it serve? It's like a lettuce cabbage family member. I, I have no interest. Can we just take that off the menu? You would not like that. Radicchio? You would or not like Radicchio. Radicchio? Radicchio. Yeah. You're being Radicchio. <laughs> You're being Radicchio. You're being Radicchio. <laughs> Right now. <laughs> Those are the In ones fact, that I crushed. That's our new safe we word. We also learned, I also, we, we learned so much about um, like Wyoming was the first place that fact, females you're could attention, vote. I want to see Radicchio in the comments. Radicchio? Yeah, if you're paying attention. No, no, put Radicchio in a spell. Give us a spell and make sure the word Radicchio is in it. What do you mean in like, a spell? Wingardia Radicchio. Oh boy. <laughs> The amount of people after the eel pit episode that DM'd me, Shaquille O'Eel, I was crying. I had no idea. It just made me feel like there was an inside joke that we were all in on and it made me so happy. Everyone got it but me. Um, So anyways, give me your best spell with Radicchio in it. (laughs) Honestly, I think we're quiz couples. No, no, uh, at where my knowledge falls off, yours really picks up. When we could quiz. When we could, I, I just feel like we should go to a trivia night. I think we should host a trivia night. Okay. For the Tillies. Yeah, for the Tillies. Yeah. Okay. But no, I, I do think we should we should practice up. We should read some yeah. books that aren't fucking like innovative tech and Smut. book porn. Yep. Do you want to just give us the highlight of the one you're reading right now? Oh, so it's called Icebreaker. Uh-huh. It's on all the end caps right now at Target actually, mm-hmm. but I went to today. Big. And it's about a figure skater and a hockey captain that have to share a rink. What could go wrong? Honestly, sometimes I get annoyed when there's too much hooking up though. The last book was like that. And I'm like, oh my God, stop fucking. Like, let's move the story along. Stop fucking, please. Because they were just like so horny. I was so annoyed. <laughs> oh my God, Lauren. We maybe shouldn't do this podcast. Oh my God. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. I get it. You Just reading Turn You On. Are you asking uh, like me or are you asking generally? The one sitting in the chair with the microphone. Oh, um, I think you have to be, well, I don't know. I feel, I feel like you have to be in the mood for it to turn you on, I would say. Okay. Cause like, I, w- I would say that like, when they're having too much sex, I'm annoyed. Like I'm not turned on whatsoever. Right. It's like uh, stuck porn. We get it. Someone likes yeah. it, not for me. And also like, you know, some of the, some of the styles of sex are, of in specific styles that maybe I'm not into. And I'm like, okay. Did you want to speak to that? Not for me. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Um, but yeah, that's just my experience. Okay, I got it. Yeah. I that's- just didn't, like when I come downstairs and you're reading fucking filth. <laughs> filth. <laughs> I haven't read dimly, anything that's In a that's dimly crazy. lit living room. I'm like, uh, mm? what's going on down here? There was one that I read that was, that was like pretty violent. Yeah? Violently filth. Violent filth. Yeah, and I actually switched over to reading it on the Kindle because I was like, I, I can't, I can't. Like, the, it's, it's too much. That bad. Like, you didn't want to be much. seen in public yeah. reading it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You were embarrassed. It was, it was the trip when we went to Mexico with Zach and Maggie, and I was like, oh, I, I remember that. I one. cannot. You read a few pages that one. That's right over my shoulder, and you were like, Oh my god. I, I think that's the day that you realized that those books are just filth. I don't think I realized that I was, at the time, dating, and am now engaged to someone who enjoys 
graphic depictions of sexual intercourse in the stories of the, in the most random stories. That one was that one was also. I was like, okay, let's move it along. I say all okay. I say all that to say the only reason I asked is because I felt like it turned me on yeah. reading it, mm -hmm. and you gave me a run of the mill answer. Um, I feel like what were we just we had just had this conversation about how like there's a reactive turn on in therapy. Yeah, yeah. Where <laughs> I feel like I feel like a lot of. Uh, maybe more male, again, I'm just going on a total limb here, but I feel like more males probably experience is just experience just like getting a whiff of sex and they're like, oh, I'm turned on. Uh, well, Not to call your sex mind simple, no, but no, no, no. I do. Let me, let, me, let me clear this up for you. We don't need it to smell like sex. It can smell like fucking cinnamon toast. Yeah. Horny. Right, exactly, that's what I'm saying, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And so I think girls are more, a lot of a lot of women are more reactive where it's like you need a lot more that goes into it to make you feel turned on. No, I tell on. you like, Fresh toast, why not get turned on? Mm, the smell of toothpaste, turned mm. on. Ah, a, a long- I need a little more than that. Mm, ribs, turned on. Of course. Yeah, like yes. you hear like the, the dinging of a door that's yeah. still open, turned on. And like when you're what? below that's the age so of like crazy. 19, yeah. anything. A boner, yeah, that's wild. Anything. That's and there's, in wild. fact, there's few things that can kill a boner yeah. when you're 19. Uh -huh. Yeah, now, uh, anything. That is so wild. It's a quick hearing, hearing th things like that. I'm like, I maybe maybe I I I don't know. Where are we going with that? Know. I okay. don't know. I do think it's a good way for like you know when dudes are just in football mode, just hitting each other. Yeah, it's a great use of energy and testosterone. Yeah, go just, smash into other dudes. Yeah, well, go. Well, 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 I mean, or do that. Yeah. Okay. So as you were saying. <laughs> so anyways, so Moose and Diggy, we got to do our Mori reveal. Speaking and of- Diggo <laughs> is the father. Speaking of selective, really thought, like well thought out um, pairing. Yes. Where you want to find the most opposite. Uh, okay. I learned <laughs> so much about purebred dogs yeah. this past week. So like, okay, because if, okay, for context, when I, when we looked at the DNA test, yes. right? I assumed I'm that- gonna, I'm gonna find the exact screenshot. Anything that was, close to 50%, right, would mean that he's the father. Right. I was not prepared to open the results and see that Diggy, Diggy's DNA matches Moose's 84%. <laughs> that is literally copy paste. It's a bad copy paste job, but it's a really- um, Okay, so let me explain, let yeah. me explain. So four, I'm reading this from the Embark DNA website. Which is basically the Encyclopedia Britannica of dog dogs. genealogy. Yes, okay, so for purebred dogs, things are a little different. All purebred dogs within a breed are closely related. By default, they share more DNA than mixed breed dogs. Okay, but is this like for ev like gold retrievers? So, okay, so yes. So the, the answer is that still, yes, they still share, um, are, are closely related, but because the amount, think about the amount of golden retrievers that are born every year versus the amount of bull terriers. So the gene pool overall for bull terriers is so minuscule because it's such a specific small breed. Can we get the numbers on that? Oh God, I read somewhere that only 200 bull terriers are born in the US a year. No. It's gotta be more than we that. We know 200. We, I follow 200 for sure. Oh, at least. So if you have a purebred dog, you'll likely see a long list of genetic relatives. That doesn't mean all those dogs are siblings. It just means that they have a lot of DNA in common. So that's what I was like, oh, this makes more sense where they're like a really, really close breed match, but they are also on top of that. They also are literally related. Right. As father and son. So if your purebred, if your purebred dog really does have a close relative, you'll often see that the relative has a very high percentage of shared DNA, sometimes even 70 to 80%, which is where obviously most so, of the- Wait, so the top of that was 80%? Yes. Hmm. <laughs> and what was Diggy's again? 84. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. But I learned a lot because I was like, wait, this is like really sketchy. I was like, oh my God, this is, this is terrifying. I mean, I don't want to point out the obvious, but it sounds like we have a cousin fucking- <laughs> <laughs> situation going on here Ooh, or even back. really just like sibling. No. Okay, so we did find out that what Moose's grandma Moose's grandma is No, also this is still not confirmed because Embark DNA doesn't give you family trees. So we're going off of the of word of mouth here and I think I think there's a few missing pieces. Well, so what we do know is that we've got two 100% small boy miniature bull terriers. No, small good boy. Small good boy. Small good boy mini bu bullies. Mini bullies. Yeah. 
good small mini bullies that are eighty four percent related. And I two hundred percent good boy yes. each each. Yeah, so four hundred percent good boy. Good boy. Yeah, yeah. and eighty four percent related. N- no, not even eighty four percent related. Eighty four percent shared DNA. Yeah, genetic match. But I think a combination of being literally father and Lauren's son. Lauren's like just not like. I literally think- Because I just learned so much and I'm like, oh my God, this makes so much sense. 84%? Yes. There's only 16% off there. That's it. Yeah. 16% difference. They they, they have two brain cells. <laughs> so like, <laughs> that means that like one in a half of those are oh the God. same. Oh my God, also Diggy fell out of his crate and it's going viral on TikTok. <laughs> he didn't fall out of his crate. He- launched he backwards. He tumbled backwards out of his crate, but he had his little flower cone on and was kind of like an airbag. And, and I think that he Can might have to. Go straight bubble boy on him. I think we have to go straight bubble boy on him. Diggy took a fat, massive shit in our primary um, bathroom the other day. Uh-huh. And like, it was one of those things where it's like, you can't even be mad at him. I you're know. Like, where did this come from? Where did it come from? Wait, it was a, why? I know. Like, but like, Lauren and I have this like running joke that, well, okay, you know, like we're on the couch uh-huh. and one of us is like, it smells like, Literal poop. If a dog, if a dog farts, whether you can hear it or not, we're like, there's a shit somewhere. There's, there's, there's poop. On, there's, there's poop on this. There's no way. There's there not a poo on the couch because it smells so like farty. I'm swimming in it. I'm swimming right. in it. And so that's the ongoing joke. But yesterday, I walked upstairs and I could hear the tone in your voice. You're like, and I said, Jeremy, I was like, there's a poo up here. There's poo up here. There's poo up here somewhere. And I, I, like, I just, I just hope it's not in the bed. And it wasn't. It wasn't. And we can thank you know Diggo for that. It, it was time that we got new. Bath. We did need a new bath mat. Anyway. Yeah. So thanks, need, Diggy. Thank you, Diggy, so for much for reminding that. Thank us you there was time for to get rid that. Of those. And we owe we owe you a thank you. <laughs> we owe you a thank you. No, I walked up to this and I was like, there is a shit somewhere on the floor, for sure. Whether it be in our bed, on the floor, on a bath mat, there's a poo somewhere. All the above. And I know it. <laughs> What's on the hotline? <laughs> Oh, man. We also never circled back on, we never finished the capybara story. All we said oh is somebody God. came out with lettuce. Yeah, go We ahead. didn't give them the oh, end. Oh, we didn't give them the end. I'm so sorry. I feel like that was a capybara blue ball. Thanks, Joe. So, okay. The the like capybara expert came out with Can a you, bucket. Okay, with capybara meat, capybara blue ball. You have got to find some new vocabulary for this. It was, sorry, it was a capybara story blue ball. Yeah. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. Story blue ball. Y- yeah. Story blue ball. Teaser. She came out with the lettuce and Cappy Bear's big lettuce fans. I'm pretty sure they're vegetarians. And yeah. they, it was it was crazy. We literally were standing on this bridge. We'll insert a video so that you can enjoy this as well too, if you're watching on the video side. Um, but she dropped some lettuce into their pool. They also had a beautiful habitat, the Cappy Bear's. Amazing. Like wood layout a towel and- You know, for being bait. rodents. Yeah. I would pick this life. The largest rodent. Like if I was a, a cheetah yeah. or a bird, mm-hmm. I don't know if I'd be down with the zoo. Capybara? Great habitat. And I will say they go to great lengths to do everything they can, like this staff, to make it a pristine yeah. environment. Like mm-hmm. you could tell like they go above and beyond. And I, also, I, I almost felt bad for them in the sense of like, they almost were doing their best to try and keep us entertained. But like their jobs and like I felt that from them were to make the animals happy. Oh my God. Yeah, Which obviously that's, that's good. the, that's the priority. But you're like, you know, like you see videos sometimes you're like, it, I don't think the animal likes that yeah. at all. Well, okay. So, and this is the other thing that I learned about was the AZA, the American Zoo Association. Uh, no, no. Mm. Association of Zoos and Aquariums. Okay. Asso- Association of Zoos and Aquariums. Yeah, that's AZA. And only, uh, I think 10% of over 2,800 different animal exhibits, exhibitors like aquariums and zoos, places Mm -hmm. that have animals are AZA certified. And that's like the stamp of approval on like veterinary medicine and ethics and morals and standards and codes around um, animals. And San Diego Zoo? Yes, has the stamp. (laughs) Pop off San Diego Zoo. So the lettuce gets dropped (laughs) into the pool and all of a sudden Mama Capybara comes just like running out of the corner, followed by her four little babies, the way that I fucking screamed. They're perfect size, because they're playful size. <gasps> they were literally playing like puppies. It was so cute. And so capybaras, the day that they are born, can already swim. They just like come out the womb knowing how to swim. And so they were just bobbing around. They were hopping on mom's back. They're pushing each other down. They were literally like rolling and playing like puppies. It was so cute. They were so little. They were but so like, adventurous. They, they can swim, they can crawl, they can run, they can jump. They can hop, yeah. They're like, they're trying to like 
hop up on mom's back. I, I can tell them like they're old enough and she's old. Yeah. She's like had enough experience. She was unbothered. She's like, I, you can You're swim. Fine. You can swim. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. You, you these can, work still? Yep. Okay, got it. Oh, they were so cute. They were so cute. Literally when they came running out in a group of four like that, I lost my fucking I, mind. I felt the birth control in Lauren just completely be negated. Yeah. I mean, that it just ate it right up Except for we would have birthed the capybara. No, for sure. Like had we um, partook yeah. that week, mm -hmm. pregnant, for with, sure. With a capybara. For, obviously. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What else would we make? Right, exactly. Obviously. It was insane. It was literally the best moment. It's like an out of body like, moment for you. I feel like everyone was like, oh, like dad's just kind of sleeping chilly. And they were like a little nervous for me. But then when we had that moment of mom getting super excited for the, the lettuce and the babies all running out and swimming and playing. Oh my God. I will say. It was everything and more. Like I'm sure that there's plenty of, of uh, reasons to love or hate every zoo, mm -hmm. uh, whether or not they're doing their best they can. I walked away and left with an appreciation both for the wildlife, but also just the amount of effort it mm -hmm. takes to just create this fucking environment yeah. 24 seven for all these different species. I, I genuinely feel like I have a, a warmer place in my heart and would, would think a little bit more, I don't know, intentionally Mindfully, yeah. about mm -hmm. the actions that I take mm -hmm. just because like, okay, the capybaras do deserve to live in a clean world. Yeah, yes they do. Of course they do. Of course they do. But I, th I think like it serves a purpose. Totally, absolutely. No, yeah. I, I get what you're saying. Um, it's always so funny hearing people who live in a place because capybaras are not endangered. They're very far from being endangered. When I tell you every, yeah. <laughs> every exhibit we went to is like after like the third or fourth thing they'd say and they are endangered, endangered and we're working no, and then this. They, they also like had the most amazing stories of like bringing animals out of like endangered oh. levels and stuff like, because of like the, the conservation. Of right, exactly. <laughs> and we've been working so hard and, yeah. and, and the capybaras, they were like, uh, capybaras are definitely not endangered. Yeah, so we can't let them out, not because they'd be dangerous to anybody. In because fact, they would very, actually harmless. really fuck up the ecosystem because here. within minutes, they'd be three times as many. Right. They would have no problem. My dream. Just My infiltrating dream. whatever environment they're in. Right, exactly. Like, I, I love that for them. Um, but yeah, people are always saying how like they live in a country or city where capybaras just kind of like roam free. Brazil looks like they just like right. fuck around. They just, yeah, they're just in fields, yeah. just like in fields and ponds like, and, and just like I, live in life. I see the comments are like, I love that you love them, but also like there's a lot of them down here. Or like if it's like their national raccoon, you know what right. I mean? It's like we see raccoons and opossums all the time, but like- Are we saying opossums now? I think there's two different no, types. No, I know, but like, I'm just gonna stick with possum. You're sticking with possum. Yeah. We have opossums in our neighborhood though, and they're so adorable. I wanna bring them inside and give them a smooch every time I see one. I feel like if I say opossum, I'm going to judge me, because I would have thought like, uh, the O is silent. Well, yeah, but that means that they don't know, because there's a possum and an opossum, and they're two different species. I know this now. Yeah. I didn't know that before. Well, now you know. No, I know, I know. I feel like I, but when I, an opossum ends up in the house, inevitably at some point. Absolutely fucking not. And if a possum <laughs> does end up in the house, I know who let it in. <laughs> Lauren thinks the most heinous looking things They're are cute. They're so cute. They look like a you fucking rat don't out of water. You follow Mushroom, the opossum on Instagram. I don't. Yeah, you said you were cultured. But so babe, cultured. when you at night scooch little butt cheeks right up to me and go, babe, babe, look, 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 Mushroom. <laughs> Oh, I just want to give him lipo kisses. I just want to give him a smooch. Just a little smooch on the mouth. I'm like, ugh. Uh, People like are like, that's how she kisses him. Got it. Yeah. Rude. Smooch on the mouth. Anyways, let's go over to the hotline. I fucking it's, love it's the hotline. Been, it's been a minute. All I want to do is hotline. I, I love the hotline. I love the hotline so much. I just love much. that the hotline is like live now. I fucking love the hotline. All right, caller number one, what you got for us? opened your packed closet and thought, I have absolutely nothing, nothing to wear. Because that sounds trust familiar. Me, <laughs> I have been there multiple times. I become quickly sick of the items constantly rotating within my wardrobe, but Quince has been a game changer for me. With their timeless classics, I'm able to create all new outfits starting with one piece. You know those pieces that just never go out of style? Quince has them all. Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. By partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts out the cost of a middleman and passes the savings on to us. 
Quince is not about just looking good. It's about feeling good about where your clothes are from. They've pledged allegiance to only those factories that uphold ethical, safe, and responsible manufacturing, premium quality that's ethically sourced, a total win-win. I am in love with their 100% Mongolian cashmere sweater starting at just $50. Plus, they've got these fabulous suede jackets, silk blouses, dresses, you name it. I recently purchased one of their cashmere hoodies, and even though the fall weather hasn't hit yet, I have not taken it off since. We all know Jeremy keeps the house at Arctic temperatures. The hoodie is my new best friend. Rude. You know that I am completely biggest fan and their cashmere takes cozy to a whole new level. So if you're looking to revamp your wardrobe with pieces that resonate with both style and values, Quince might just be your next fashion destination. Take the drama out of playing an outfit and upgrade your closet with Quince today. Go to quince.com slash wild for free shipping on your orders and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash wild and get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash wild. Hi Lauren and Fiance Jeremy. I love the pod. And my advice in general is just like how just keep it here. to navigate when you do officially move in together. Like what obviously communication is one of the most important things, but how is it that you kind of like begin to build that life together and compromise in your own space and all those kinds of things? So any advice you have would be very welcome. But I hope to hear from you guys soon on the pod. Does anybody listen to us in America? I was going to say, literally, or, or maybe just um, um, Americans and- Are too blase and don't, don't Canadians respond to anything. Are, are they are scared to send uh, audio messages? I love it. I don't know. I think love Australia, the accents. right? Love Australia? the accents. I think so, yeah. 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 I, let's go to Australia. Let's do an Australian tour. I would love that so much. And then we'll go to the UK and then come home. Perfect. Uh, go ahead. Um, I, I, I think that if she were to be younger, I would say- my advice might be different, but I think based on the situation and the age of this current um, relationship, I think that if it's working and it has been working for as long as it obviously has been, I think it's totally fine. Well, since you seem, as you said, to care so much about other people's opinions, I think you should fucking do it. I think so too. No, like you just not, you're never gonna know. I also think that like, if you naturally, I, I almost feel like this is actually best case scenario because Agreed. you naturally- It feels too soon. But it shouldn't feel soon. It, and yeah. it only feels too soon though, because you're like, wait, what did this happen too easily? Did this soon. happen too like naturally? If you don't have the full context of the relationship, you're not there every day. You're certainly not there there every day. Oh, the outsider. But yeah, like as an outsider, even if you like are a well intentioned friend. Her, and I was like, no, no, I think she's there. I think she's there. No, Got but like, it, the for outsider. like a friend who's yes. like a well intentioned yes. friend who like found out halfway through really how serious it was. Right. right, like, right. This is moving so fast. Are you sure that you want to yes. take it? It's like, no, 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 you don't understand the sense of like we spent six and a half months like of dating in the mm -hmm. first two months, just always hanging out. And so it just feels closer. Yeah, no, I yeah. think this is this is honestly similar to what happened to us is that yeah, like, I literally, that's you what I was essentially spent five nights a week, probably almost the exact situation. Except for you were not closer to my place of work. I was definitely not closer to your you place of work. You made me a worse employee overnight. Yes, 100%. Um, and like you started staying over though, like five nights a week and we, you kept your apartment so that you kind of had it, you know, on the nights that great you parking spot. wanted to stay. There was a great, but it ended up just being literal storage. And that kind of sounds like that's the scenario that's happening as well too. And so I think that for having like a period of time where you have separate spaces as an option, I think is a great period where you start considering like, okay, could we do this for real if we actually shared a space and had to learn how to compromise through chores and like the yep. the less, you know, glamorous parts of living together. But I think it sounds like you've had more than enough practice and you're both at ages that would give the impression that you know who you are and you know your routines and you understand that communication is important and compromise in space. And you understand that you may have to sacrifice the aesthetic of what a gaming computer is gonna look like in your home. Not sure why that would be important. And well, to me, I'd be like, well, that shit's gonna be fucking ugly as hell. Where are we gonna put that? I know, but you but you love him. So you're gonna And get you're gonna over figure it, it out. Yeah, yeah totally, just exactly. Like the, just like the beautiful speakers that we have in our living room and the subwoofer. <sighs> That is the that is the exact comparison, actually. Yeah, it's that amazing. Is the exact comparison. It's, it's a beautiful thing. It is. But no, just like you're never gonna know until you know. And like, 
it's just so. Also, worst case scenario. To, that's what I'm thinking. Is that he moves out and gets his own spot again. Or you move out. <laughs> exactly. Like, whatever, like, exactly. It, like, like there's, but it feels like the yeah. groundwork is already more than like laid out well enough for this to be set up for success. You already have a decent example of what it's like to live mm -hmm. for the most part together. Mm -hmm. Now just do it with more like permanent spaces. Right. And also like, to, to your point, communication is everything. Communication everything, everything else falls, everything, everything, everything falls yeah. into place. Yeah. yeah. And also yeah. like figure out, figure out what you actually care about versus like, like don't like let just shit just like go too long without saying anything, but also right. figure out what hill you actually want to die on and let the rest of them roll. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. great. I'm excited for it. I think it's gonna go great. I think so too. Next caller. Hello, Lauren and Jeremy. I hope you two are having a very lovely day so far. I am in a bit of a crisis. Oh no. How to set up a boundary with someone. Um, she's one of my best friends and yeah. So I'm a rising high school senior. I am a junior right now, but I will be a senior next year. My friend is a year older than me, so she's a senior. And this is concerning prom. I know that seems like, ugh, no. you're so young, mm -mm. you'll be fine, whatever. However, it's more so about like setting up a boundary with her. I'm struggling to do that. I'm a lovely introverted person. Typically, I'd rather stay home in my bed with a blanket and watch RuPaul's Drag Race while eating pasta. Slay. That'd be Slay. great. Is, are you right. me? So it takes a lot for me to, you know, get out, have fun, whatever. I went to prom last year with her and her ex-boyfriend and a few other friends. It was lots of fun. However, her ex-boyfriend was an asshole, treated her poorly. That happened and it was just a shit show. And me and all the other friends that went kind of predicted that would happen. Long story short, she has a new boyfriend. We're not the most fond of him. He seems a bit manipulative. Um, he, honestly, he seems a bit racist. It's horrible. Oh. And also, I don't think he's a good influence on her. Um, but I'm afraid to tell my boyfriend, hey, like, I don't think your boyfriend's a good influence on you. And I don't think he's treating you right. But I don't want to sound like a bitch telling her that. And basically, we're supposed to be going to prom again this year. And she wants to, you know, like, we're going to rent a limo. We're all going to go together. But her boyfriend will be there. He kind of makes me and my other friends uncomfortable. You know, he vapes. She used to vape, but now she's started vaping again because of him, which is horrible. And then they both drink. And I know after prom, they're going to try and drink and try to get me to join, which is horrible. And my friend knows I don't like being around alcohol because of some lovely childhood experiences that I had. And like, how do I tell her or set up a boundary? Like, hey, I want to go to prom with you. I love you. You're my best friend. I want to have a great time with you. However, I don't necessarily want to be around your boyfriend in that atmosphere, but it's her senior prom and it's her boyfriend and she wants to have a good time with him, but I also want to have a good time with her. And I'm, I don't want this to like, be made about me, but like, how do I set up that boundary without seeming like a bitch? <laughs> Anyways, I love you guys. I love the pod. Brings me so much laughter and joy. Ooh, this is getting a little bit long. <laughs> I hope Moose and Diggy are having a great old time. Thank you guys. Bye. Oh, fucking shit. If I had half the brain cells she has, yeah, right when you were a junior. Yeah. Oh my god. No, the the uh the emotional yeah. intelligence and the overall awareness is astounding. It's, oh my god. I'm like So like let's start there. Yeah. I Oh, fucking The fact that she, she's asking about prom at the same time she's talking about a fully thought through yeah. well like just like has thought through the pros and cons and weighed the this options. Is, this is the hardest though because she obviously has such a good head oh, on her shoulders and It would be it, so much easier if you were ignorant. 100% so if you could, if you, okay, here's the advice. Oh. Just take those brain cells and your good feelings and Put your good meaning and just throw those away and just lead <laughs> with whatever comes to mind and you'll be fine. Oh. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. That is so hard because I mean, she, she hit the nail right on the head when she said that it's her senior prom and it's her boyfriend. So it's like, obviously like that is something. And, and I, I know what you say, but like, I, I, I know what you mean when you're saying that like, prom feels young, but like when you are 
in grade 12 and you're going to prom, that's the biggest thing ever. Like that is the center of everything when you are 17, 18. It, it and is so as, I totally- It is as big as anything else that's going on in anybody else's life. yeah. Your prom is as big to you as whatever their big thing is to them. My prom was the capybaras. That, yes. My problem in life right now is the capybaras. But like the moments won't feel any bigger or smaller totally. than what, how they feel right now. Exactly. So Nothing don't let anybody changes. tell you otherwise. Yeah, hundred percent. So don't downplay your your whatever, problem. Whatever it is that you whatever it is you care about. Right. But fuck, that is so hard because no, she's so self aware that it's again the best friend and it's her prom. She's the senior and that's her boyfriend. And I know what <sighs> I think. I can't wait to hear what you think. Oh, man, I'm I I empathize with her so much. <sighs> here's where my mind goes initially. Yeah. And I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud. And cause I don't, I don't know if I would execute this, but here's, here's what I'm initially thinking. Know, that's how podcasts work. We just, we, we just, just, just speak words. Yeah. 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 Is that it's our, it's our, it's our therapy time together. <laughs> is that it's so hard to tell someone that you essentially disapprove of their significant other without causing some kind of tension. Because okay. their initial reaction, no matter how you approach it for the most part, like they're, wh whether they're able to process that and have a response that is positive, I think your initial, no matter who you are, no matter how emotionally mature you are, I think your initial, if someone comes to me and says they don't like you, my initial, my initial feeling is like defensiveness, right? Totally. And so I, I think especially even if it's offensive, it's defensive. Right, right, yeah. exactly, exactly. Because no matter how they preface it and like, and you start the sentence with like, I care about you so much and I just want what's best for you. And I, I'm just looking out for you and I just want you to be happy. And then you follow it with something that's like, but da 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 da, I essentially disapprove of your boyfriend. Like that's just so hard on both sides, I think, because I think in my experience too, like no matter how many times a dude would cheat on one of my friends, like I, we couldn't convince her to leave it. We just couldn't. And you just can't convince that person to do anything otherwise because they have to be the one to make the decision. So I think making any decisions that control how the boyfriend is in, is involved is outside of kind of your jurisdiction. Agreed. <sighs> Fucking, I don't even know. What do you, what, what do you think? Well, I want to, you should finish. No, I don't know. I'm, 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 I don't know. J I mean, from the guy perspective. Yeah. I think it's always a slippery slope when you genuinely like want to be a good friend. Yeah. And by being a good friend, you feel like it's almost your responsibility to be honest about the fact that you do not approve of and do not like, or mm -hmm. do not uh, even want to even uh, participate. Right. Even secondarily, right? With someone who you do love when they're in that relationship, especially when they're in the same room. But that's unfortunately, to your point, outside the jurisdiction. Yeah. So, so to make things I think simpler for prom, I think it'd be a lot easier if, you were honest about the fact that like you had really difficult news to share mm -hmm. and that you didn't sugarcoat that. Don't sugarcoat that like, I've got a really uncomfortable thing to tell you. Mm -hmm. Always got accusation audit, accusation audit, because make her feel like you're about to give her unfair news. Like you're about to be like, you're going to, to, to break her. Like you need to really set the scene here in the sense of like, I have a really, in fact, I have the most uncomfortable conversation we've ever had. We have to have it right now. I don't want to have it, but we're going to have it. Mm -hmm. If someone tells that to me, everyone's dead. Like I just, I just assume the worst. Yeah, for and sure. And if your next, the next thing that comes out of your mouth isn't, I don't want your boyfriend there. Or I don't want to go if your boyfriend's there. Or I don't want to go to prom with you anymore because of this and a thousand good reasons. It's going to put on the, the defensive. If you simply speak in your own perspective of, I am really concerned and others share this, but I'm not going to speak for them. I'm speaking only for me here. And I don't want, and I, I, I don't even want to get into conversation with other people, but I'm really concerned that mm -hmm. I'm not going to be able to have the the time and the night, the fun that I want to have around the experience or the night. If the type of fun that you want to have is doing things that I'm not comfortable with. Yeah. Simple as that. Mm. You're not telling her to not go with her boyfriend. You don't want to go with her. This you're saying you want to have the best time and for you to have the best time, you don't want to have somebody else's fun take away from that. Now, whether that not their fun is right or wrong, we don't, even, we don't even get into it and don't label it. Don't be the person who's like, oh no, no, she hates my boyfriend. It's like, no, 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 she, she just doesn't want to be around some of the things that are probably going to go on. Mm -hmm. And she's a good friend for 
basically putting it in her friend's hands in the sense of like, hey, I wanna have a great time. I wanna have a great time with you. But if you wanna have a great time doing these things, that's not gonna be healthy for me. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanna put that out there and just see what she has to say. God, I just feel like I can foresee her being like, so what do you want me to do about it? That's up to you. That's totally up to you. And I support you completely. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying I can't be around these things and be the person that I want to be or, or have the fun that I want to have. But is that an ultimatum where she has to choose the boyfriend no, or the of best course. friend? That, no, 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 no. Like, like you're not saying, hey, I'm not going to probably be able to do this or hey, we don't want you to come. It's simply, hey, I'm like, the, this This is the selfish part here. Mm -hmm. I, I can't have these things on any night, especially this one, because it means so much to me. Mm -hmm. And I know that you know that and I know that you respect that. So although your boyfriend's involved in that, it's just like, I know that these are things that you might want to do or he might want to do. And I want to tell you no, I don't want to tell you at all. That's not, that's, that, that's unfair. But I do want to set the boundary for myself. That's simple, that is, that is just putting your own stake in the ground and like knowing where your line is. Mm -hmm. Like, and if she's half as empathetic as I think she is, I'm sure the friend's gonna understand it in the sense of like, okay, this is only coming from someone who's thought about this in the sense of like, she doesn't wanna be offensive. She's just protecting herself here. Yeah. And if the friend can't see that because she is so infatuated with the boyfriend, that that's unfortunate, but like you can't control that. Right, that's out of your, that's- Yeah. Out of your control. I think, you're approaching, I think you're approaching this from the, the exact right way. You've already thought through all the ways that somebody else could be upset about this. Right. Just as long as you're coming at it from that way, do your best. And Man, also- that's but also don't, don't put your, don't put yourself in a position where you're going, going to, to be, be uncomfortable. Yeah. 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 I love this. So I am kind of just confused. Um, <laughs> I Same. had <laughs> this situation with this, um, girl while I was at FFA camp and, um, honestly it was the best thing that I have ever experienced and um so while everybody else it was down at the lake while well, we were supposed to be down at the lake um we kind of snuck off to the bunks and um we had some fun um we didn't hook up or anything um not that i'm not like that i guess um but we made out and we got super high Okay, like I'm talking, I was tripping. But anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, I don't know, it was a lot of, it was a lot of fun. So um, if, I don't know, I'm just kind of confused and I don't know if it was so good because um, emotionally we were at the same level or if it was because it was kind of rebellious for me. Um, I live on like the Missouri-Arkansas border, so that. like that's kind of pretty much just out of the norm. Um, and so I just, I just want your opinion on one of those. So thank you. Also, I love y'all's podcast. Sometimes it's the only thing that gets me through the day. So Aww. alrighty, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day. But that I, was lo the most, I love the Northern already, Southern accent. I have a one. That was the most genuine thing I've ever heard in my entire life. But like, you, uh, Missouri, Arkansas is like, that's like Northern Southern or Southern Northern. You, I, don't, like, I, don't I know you don't know, know geography, yeah, say, but it's like, <laughs> you would say it's means. like, Missouri feels like to you, not the Midwest, but it's like the yeah. bottom of the Midwest, but like above the South. And so uh, anyway, that that pocket of America uh -huh. is a, 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 it's a very, they would be less liberal and progressive than what you would like it to be. <laughs> <laughs> that I might be angry with some of the politics. Yeah. Got it, got it, got oh, it. I love this story. Um, I'm so excited for her. I mean, the sane, one time at band camp exists for a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is this is true um, by panic. Yeah. And I'm so excited for her. For her by panic? For her by panic. <laughs> I'm so excited for her All by right. panic. I, I couldn't have less to add to this. Go ahead. Well, no, I, I also, um, to be fully transparent, have never questioned my sexuality. <laughs> what? Lauren's the straightest girl I've ever dated. I, I really I really have never questioned my sexuality. I've, I, I've never had and, a girlfriend and, who doesn't make I, out with other girls. I just feel like that's also a privilege because I know that a lot of people totally. face that, you know, moment of their life where they have bi panic or pan panic or, you know, whatever sexuality. But I think now more than ever, sexuality is on a spectrum. Um, and I think that it's really so much more common than people realize. 
of people being, I guess this would might maybe fall into the pansexual of just like being attracted to someone, like the way that she's speaking about like energies connecting right. and like being on the same like wavelength as a person. Like it might not necessarily be that you are attracted to, you know, just females in general, but it might just be you're attracted to that one person, whether their gender be A, B, C, D, what, you know, whatever it might be. Yep. Um, and so I don't know, I, again, like I, I haven't ever had to face this question myself, but I'm excited for her that she found someone that she felt that level of excitement with. Well, I think, okay, I would say find, found something. Yeah, found something, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, there's a person Again, there, of it's course. That, it's that spark, it's yeah. that spark, you know what I mean? And I think that maybe just moving forward, just being open to anyone who gives you that same feeling is something that I guess would be my advice. Well, I think it's less, of, yes, yes. Yeah. But like as someone, like, like I couldn't have, I don't know what you're feeling. I don't know, I don't know what's going on, mm -hmm. but I do know that it sounds like you're trying to find a, a like you are trying to rationalize or yeah. find logic or reason, which is highly intelligent of you, yes. a natural response. Yep. And I don't think you're ever gonna find logic. Right. I right. do think you're going to find a lot of reasons that would point one way or the other. And some of them are right and some of them are wrong. Mm -hmm. That's probably it. Oh, I just think it's like, you know that you have the ability to have fun in ways that you didn't know before this, right. that you could have fun. Mm -hmm. That's where you're at right now. Yeah, for sure. I totally agree. I think trying and to force that or trying to recreate that is the only mistake. Mm -hmm. Like trying to like, oh no, I'm gonna have that feeling again. Don't chase that feeling. That feeling was special. That was new, that was unique. Just go with the fact that like, you're a little bit more open to things generally yeah. than you realize. You know what I'm thinking about is that like now, if she were to, you know, sign up for a dating app, it's like, right. which gender box would you tick? Like right. when you're forced with but having that's to what makes it like, scary. that's what I'm saying though, yeah. is that like, like when you're faced with that decision, yeah. it's like, is she hovering over checking off like the, the women box as right. well too. Right. And I think in this situation, like if you were able to have an experience where you felt that spark with a woman, like I would say, check that box, you know, and meet some people and you know, maybe, you know, just go with the flow, what you're comfortable with. And if you find someone that gives you that spark, maybe it's just not, it's not about the gender. It's I'm, not, a, it's not about the, the parts that are attached. It's crazy because it, this is showing my age here, but like coming from the Midwest, it would be so scary mm -hmm. whenever I was in high school, God knows how long ago, just worrying about, oh, what are all the people around her going to judge her for now? Right. Like that's what, that would be my worry. But like, anymore, I'm like, oh, hopefully things aren't so like yeah. uh, set in stone as far as how she's supposed to outwardly share mm -hmm. what she's excited about. Point is, I think you should probably do what feels natural to you yeah. and just keep in the back of your mind trying to figure out how you actually feel about it and be safe. That's it. This is, the Tillys are in, is like Mercury in retrograde right now. Oh my God, it's I can't going believe you on. just said that. I it's can't believe you just said like that. I feel like we're on a transition right now. Oh my God. I only said that because our editor, Robin, told me the other day that Mercury is in retrograde. And she's like, I, I feel like Mercury is always in fucking met retrograde. I think it's a little insensitive for you to say that. <laughs> um, and I'm like kidding. I was like, like the third thing that went wrong that day. She's like, well, I, I, oh. she goes, I know that you're going to say this is complete bullshit. And I was like, it's bullshit, whatever it is. And she's like, but Mercury is entering retrograde. I was like, oh, oh that I, makes I sense I don't now. know what that means. Let's there, get there Neil was a crazy, Tyson. There was a crazy sunset though tonight. Let's get Neil on yeah. to talk about, uh, let's, let's just like prepare only astrology questions. Ask him no astronomy questions. Right, See how it goes. just astrology. Yeah. Yeah, that's what happened to me when I took that astronomy class by accident yeah. and it wasn't astrology. <laughs> but by the way, I think what's crazy is that like, you know how like you can like be more almost like honest with people you don't know, but like you yeah. have a connection with, mm -hmm. like hopefully this is the beginning of more of this for her. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. I and love so, it. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm excited for her. Same. I'm excited for uh, her. Follow up. We want to hear the updates. What's going on with it? Everything. Yeah. That's all. Um, so anyways, please leave me your best Harry Potter spell that has radicchio in it. And uh, <laughs> I will leave you with that. Lafia, it's been good to hang out. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Bye guys. Bye all.